quick revision video on carboxylic acids. So we'll start by naming some carboxylic acids. So the first one there on the top left has got one, two, three, four, five carbons. So that's pentanoic acid. The next one in the main chain has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to be heptanoic acid. And there's a methyl group, not a number two, because that's carbon number one. So this is six methyl heptanoic acid. The next one has got two carboxylic acid groups, so this is what we call a dioic acid. So this has got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, so that's hexane, dioic acid. And we'll finish with a couple of aromatic ones. So the first one there is benzoic acid. And the last one has two carboxylic acid groups at positions one and three on a benzene ring. So it's actually called 1,3-benzene dicarboxylic acid. So if we move on to the functional group itself now, which is called the carboxyl group. So there it is drawn up there and you can see the polarity of the bonds in the group. So in there we've got a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group. But when you put them together in this functional group, it becomes the carboxyl group. So it has its own unique functional group properties. So if we move on to solubility now, carboxylic acids are soluble in water and that's because they can form hydrogen bonds with water molecules. So you can see how I've drawn them up there, just be careful. The hydrogen bond must go from a lone pair on the oxygen to the slightly positive hydrogen of a water molecule. And as the carbon chain gets longer, they become less soluble and that's because the long non-polar carbon chains have a great effect on the overall polarity of the molecule. So if we start looking at the chemical properties now, they are weak acids, so they partially dissociate in water. So we can show that with a chemical equation. I'm going to use ethanoic acid as the example. So ethanoic acid, when you put it in water, it partially dissociates into its ions. In other words, it releases the H plus ion, and we have this reversible reaction set up where this is called the ethanoate ion. And that's an example of a carboxylate ion, and they in general look like that. So we'll look at the chemical reactions now. So we'll start with the redox reactions of carboxylic acids. So the example I've got here is when they react with metals. So when carboxylic acids react with metals, we get a carboxylate salt and hydrogen. So the example I'm going to use is propanoic acid with calcium. There's the equation, and note that we need two of these carboxylate ions for the calcium 2 plus ion. So that salt there is called calcium propanoate. Why is it redox? Well, we've got calcium starting in its zero oxidation number as the element, and in the salt it goes to 2 plus, so that's been oxidized. Whereas in the acid, hydrogen is in its plus one oxidation state and in H2, the element, it's zero. So that's being reduced. So we've got oxidation and reduction taking place in that reaction. So if we move on to the neutralization reactions now of carboxylic acids, like all acids, they're going to react with metal oxides, alkalis and carbonates. So we'll just take each one in turn, and I've got a different example for each one. So starting with um, carboxylic acids and metal oxides, we get carboxylate salt and water. Example I'm using is ethanoic acid and potassium oxide. And there's the equation. Now, observations-wise, you would notice that the potassium oxide solid is going to dissolve. Moving on to carboxylic acid and metal hydroxide, we get carboxylate salt and water again. The example I'm going to use this time is methanoic acid and magnesium hydroxide. There's the equation, and again you would see the solid hydroxide this time would dissolve. Now notice in those two equations the salt slightly different formulae because of the charges of the metal ions. So when you've got a 1 plus ion, you don't need this in a bracket because you just need one of each, whereas below for the magnesium 2 plus you do. 
So we'll name these salts now. The first one is potassium ethanoate, and the second one is magnesium methanoate. So the final reaction is carboxylic acid and metal carbonate. You can see we get carboxylate salt and water, but we also get carbon dioxide. So the example I'm using is butanoic acid and sodium carbonate. There's the equation. So what would you observe? You'd observe the solid sodium carbonate would dissolve and the, you'd see bubbles of CO2 gas as well. And the salt would be called sodium butanoate. So we'll finish with this. The reaction with carbonates is the basis for the test for the carboxyl group. Carboxylic acids are essentially the only organic compounds that are acidic enough to react with carbonates. So if you add a dilute acid to a carboxylic acid, you're going to see effervescence. And that's also useful for distinguishing between phenols and carboxylic acids because they're both acidic, but phenols aren't sufficiently acidic. So you don't get any effervescence when a phenol reacts with a carbonate, whereas you do if it was a carboxylic acid.